Thanks, Kirk, uh, and good morning to all our guests. Just, uh, I want to just focus um, most of my questions in relation to the CMO's report in 2018. Um, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Go. Hey, hey. So, um, my questions are on the CMO report um, in four, four years ago um, in relation to its 19 recommendations. So you said 11 have, have been completed. Could you name a number of them recommendations that have been completed in, in that category? I might ask Cleena to come in. So um, there are a number of recommendations. I might start in terms of the completed um, working in conjunction with other stakeholders, develop comp comprehensive evidence-based information resources about mesh devices and the services in place. So that's one, one of the ones. I don't know whether you want me to read out, but I can report, provide a report to the committee on each one because they're quite lengthy in terms of the detail yeah, of the rest. Gino, can, we, can you accept that? We'll, we'll get that yes. full report. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and the the five outgoing, uh, could you kind of um, elaborate on, uh, say, a number of them in relation to the ongoing um, recommendations? Yeah, so there, and I might just for ease of reference, there are four in particular which are ongoing, and they relate to mesh tra professional training requirements and mesh surgical unit facilities. So for ease of reference, and I won't go through them all again because they're quite lengthy, the recommendations 8 to 11, and mainly they've been comprehended by recommendation 12, which is around national clinical guidance, but they do refer to, I suppose, when the pause is lifted. So they only come into being um, when the pause is lifted, so they, they require that pause to be lifted. So that's four of the recommendations. The other one that's ongoing is recommendation one, which is around, uh, it relates to, it's under the heading of patient information and consent. And it, it, I suppose that, that's in draft, but again, it needs to be updated in line with new research and best practice when the system on notice that is on notice that the pause is to be lifted. So again, it relates to that, the lifting of the pause. Right. And the three that are no longer deemed clinically appropriate, could you elaborate on that? Yeah, I might get cleaner to come in on that if that's so, okay. So uh, that relates to mesh for prolapse uh, surgery, and um, it, it's now not going to be a recommendation that mesh, uh, you know, would be used in prolapse surgery, and the clinicians, um, you know, uh, would, would advise that going forward. So, in that case, it you know makes them mute, uh, um, mute uh, in that case. So we do have guidance uh, going forward so, so, uh, to deal with that. Okay. And just my final question is in relation to the overall programme itself. Um, and obviously, four years ago, it was pause. Do you envisage that the programme could recommence under you know, the recommendations fulfilled, uh, the recommendations carried out, uh, and with the consent of, obviously, medical professionals and obviously the, the women that have kind of suffered terribly in relation to this, but is it envisaged that the problem could recommence in the future? Yeah, I, I might come in first and I'll bring uh, Clean in uh, secondly. Uh, one of the issues for us, and, and we've heard um, through the testimony um, from the women affected um, by, by a number of the members here, is the significant learning, there's no doubt, um, from the response to the recommendations that we've put in place across a number of headings. And that's recognised and, and we need to hear that. Um, and I've, I've heard that from a number of the members, as I say, and, and the women affected. Um, so that's something we need to take on board. I suppose it, it has been always our intention after setup of the service and that operational response that we'd have a national oversight group in place to have a look at the service in terms of what we've put in place and what learnings we can take from that. And, and some of the learnings from today obviously as well and our engagement uh, with the groups but on the specific question again around lifting the pause uh, that oversight group the intention around that was to look at you know whether that would be appropriate but I might get clean it come in on on the mechanics of that Okay. Yeah, um, I, I guess it wouldn't be our role to lift the pause in that the, the, the CMO, um, you know, uh, caused the pause in the first place for good reasons. But should the pause be lifted, then obviously it would be a different um, landscape that you'd be talking about. So you'd be talking about uh, uh, tighter guidelines, uh, designated people who would be um, uh, approved to insert mesh under, uh, you know, strict controls. Um, you'd be talking about a database of those mesh 
it. Um, but we are, as a clinician group, aware there are a large number of people, you know, suffering from stress urinary incontinence symptoms for whom conservative measures have failed and, uh, and that MESH for stress urinary incontinence is recommended by a number of professional groups as an appropriate management for stress urinary incontinence. Um, so there is that other competing interest of, of uh, large numbers of, of women also in, in clinics, you know, suffering uh, from incontinence. But the landscape would be different, the controls would be different, and the, you know, the, the oversight and data collection would be different. So, yeah, okay. So, Obviously, where I'm taking from that, that yeah, the program could be uh, recommenced in the future. Um, and just, just for my final question, in relation to this procedure done uh, elsewhere outside this jurisdiction, how prevalent um, is you know this procedure um, done in, say, in Britain or mainland Europe? So um, there's been different approaches in different countries. So, um, for example, in Germany, I don't think believe there there was a pause. There is a pause, and and uh, uh, you know, mesh itself was not uh, taken off the market. You know, in any in any place. In the Netherlands, the the response was uh, along the lines of clinical governance again, tightening regulations and guidelines, uh, and that. Um, and in uh, in New Zealand and and Australia, the uh, there were slightly tighter controls as well um, in that area. So different approaches taken in different countries, um, but it, it is fair to say, you know, mesh is being used in many other countries. Yes. Okay. Dr. Morphy, has, has, in your experience, has the procedure ever been, has it been banned in any country around the world, whether, you know, where a government or a health authority has said it will be? It has been paused as opposed to being banned, you know, so, okay. um, so, yeah, that, you know, and, and, from the HPRA would say there was no um, report of a particular device, for example, being, um, you know, taken off the market or unsuitable to use in that way. Yeah. And th does it cause you concern that, you know, different countries have paused the programme itself? Because obviously there's, there's obviously concerns not only in this country, but also elsewhere that, you know, a medical procedure could be actually detrimental to but, um, I, I think it's it's you know in in retrospect what um, possibly the problem is not so much the medical device in itself but um, how widespread it's used and what indications and the counselling and the other options that were given to people as opposed to a particular device uh, being unsafe in itself uh, I think that would be fair to say and the responses in the different countries would seem to indicate um, that the safety measures put in place were along the tightening the controls and the indications for that, as opposed to being more indiscriminate. And do you, do you see the programme recommencing in the future in Ireland? I know it's difficult to say, but... As I say, it's not, it's not for NYP or the HSE to lift a pause. So we, we will await... Who, um, who, who, would that, who would make that decision? Well, the CMO... Essentially, it was the same also. I mean, the CMO recommendations, uh, you know, we, we've been working to uh, complete the CMO recommendations, so that would be the first step. Thanks.